Hey, I said I was a V-critic, not a V-anime critic. I need to know that I have done one thing right with my life! Don't worry, this is not a major video. The next one will be fate-related. Somehow. But I wanted to make this review cube, a review cube essentially being shorter form reviews that I may make on occasion, about a little film you may have heard of floating around called The Whale. The Whale, starring Brendan Fraser as a morbidly obese man named Charlie, is a flick that may resonate with at least half of those who see it, but admittedly, there are ways you can look through its illusions at a gripping melodrama about a man trying to reconnect with his estranged, if not a complete bitch of a daughter, while knowing his time is ultimately at its end, his poor health catching up with him to the point of being on the brink of death. Now, it's important to note that The Whale is based on a play from 2012 of the same name, and boy does it really show for most of the runtime, and it's also important to note its director, Darren Aronofsky. I never saw the play, hell, I've never seen a play before. Better yet, believe it or not, I've never seen a Darren Aronofsky film. Yes, I've heard of Requiem for a Dream, The Wrestler, Mother, and Black Swan, but... Never saw them. Maybe I should fix that someday. Not that you need to have seen any of his films or seen the play, because the tale we have here is inherently a simple one. Brendan Fraser's character is a depressed sack of fat, his daughter hates his guts, and he wants to reconnect. Somehow. You could boil it down like that, but I'd say it's boiling it down a little too much. Within the approximately two-hour runtime, plenty does happen despite the film taking place primarily inside an apartment. There's a certain tragedy to Charlie's very existence that you do feel sorry for. Added to that, his past regarding his divorced wife, his past lover having passed away, and the fact that everyone just can't stop giving the poor guy so much food that he gobbles up like a hamster. He's trying to be positive, but it's positivity in the face of an inevitable end. And the film makes it a point to really show the limits such positivity can have before you realize it's kind of futile when you're a morbidly obese Brendan Fraser. There's even a Christian missionary character who tries to add religion into the mix and boy does it go places I didn't expect. This character in particular has his own baggage going on. In fact, every character has baggage going on. The prosthetics to bring Charlie to life really is impressive to the point where you really believe that that's what Brendan Fraser looks like in real life. It's really that good. It also helps that the performances on display here are all fantastic, which given the theater play-esque format is very important. Everyone from Sadie Sink playing Charlie's miscreant daughter, Hong Chow being the caring but clearly stressed out nurse friend, Ty Simpkins being the missionary who may have more going on than what he lets on, to even the dude who plays the pizza guy, which in such a minor role, at that, is just plain excellent all around. However, they definitely pale in comparison to Fraser himself, as he probably is the reason you'd want to watch The Whale to begin with, or at least one of the reasons. He pours himself into the role like nobody's business, and I literally can't imagine anyone else playing the role like him. It's the kind of performance where you really forget that there's an actor under all that makeup and fattening prosthetic work that it's hard to tell the man and his role. The hype surrounding his performance with that six minute long standing ovation he received at the Venice International Film Festival was totally well earned. If he doesn't get nominated for an Oscar, let alone win one, it'd be a huge, absolute shame on the Academy's part. But it's one thing to have a stunning performance as a character and having the character be fleshed out through characterizations and actions. Unfortunately, aside from maybe Charlie and the missionary kid, the rest of the cast fall trapped underneath the fact that this really is a play that happens to have been filmed on camera. And by that, not a very complicated play. Sure, the drama, when it peaks, is absolutely gut-wrenching at key points, but I gradually started poking holes that were left behind due partly because of what function the characters serve at their basic level throughout. It falls victim to the theater format's limitations. The problem with the format, and as someone who's never actually been to a play, even I can tell this from a mile away, is that it's clear that each character really does fill an archetype rather than being fully-fledged, fleshed-out human beings in their own right. You can't help but shake the feeling that every time Brendan Fraser says no, every single time someone even dares suggest that he go to the hospital, that someone should seriously call 911 anyway. If it wasn't for this being the case, one of the primary conflicts of the film would have been solved rather quickly. If I was in someone's shoes and I saw that a morbidly obese Brendan Fraser was on the brink of congestive heart failure, I would have called 911 regardless of what he wanted. 
No, Brendan Fraser, you're going to the hospital right now. So basically, The Whale is a melodrama that could be maybe a little too melodramatic for its own good. But then again, if it wasn't, there wouldn't be any plot to it, now would there? That can be a problem for a drama, especially one that hinges so much on there being a conflict at all. How easy would the drama be solved if any character acted realistically, because, in a way, these aren't characters. They're tools for the story. I'm also trying to figure out the whole message of the whale. Is it a tale of perseverance because the characters don't really persevere unless it's entirely metaphorical and is one big test of Charlie's self-worth as a human being, in which case his actions should definitely speak louder than words and his actions in the film can sort of conflict with this reading. No lesson is really learned about his eating habits, but then again, Nobody calls 911 when he really needs it. Regardless, I thought The Whale was still a good time, with the performances alone being worth the full ticket price alone. But don't expect the most in-depth story or characters in the world. This isn't that kind of film. Anyway, I wanted to take a detour from anime to review a non-anime work for once. Hope you've stuck around, and see you next time when I cover something Fate-related. Hopefully. The Whale is easily a 3.5 out of 5.